Let's see that everything is working. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Sandra Arevalo, as you may have already seen. Um, I'm the founder of uh, Wiser, uh, which is a company that started uh, already uh, five years ago to transition into this uh, online freelancing market. Um, we founded Wiser because we were seeing an increased need on the flexibility uh, for workers all around the globe and how this personal need was meeting uh, with the increase of um, freelance platforms where you can find those jobs. So, uh, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Sandra Arevalo, as you may have already seen. Um, I'm the founder of uh, Wiser, uh, which is a company that started uh, already uh, five years ago to transition into this uh, online freelancing market. Um, we founded Wiser because we were seeing an increased need on the flexibility uh, for workers all around the globe and how this personal need was meeting uh, with the increase of um, freelance platforms where you can find those jobs. So um, we started first uh, a service that to connect freelancers with job opportunities representing um, the, the talent that we had. Um, then we started uh, to build the technology to make sure that we can find jobs very fast for those talents. Uh, and later uh, we launch um, an academy to help freelancers navigate these waters of uh, online freelancing platforms. Um, so we are gonna share uh, with you today a bit of the experience that we have acquired during this um, five year uh, journey. Um, feel free to make any questions uh, you consider relevant for you today in, in the chat. We'll make sure that we have enough time uh, before finishing uh, to uh, answer all of them. Um, and um, then let's start here uh, with the main content that we will see. So uh, the first uh, thing we're gonna talk today, it's about online freelancing. Is that an opportunity? Is that a career choice? Is this both? So we're gonna interact a bit uh, about it. Then we're gonna talk about how to start uh, freelancing online. Uh, what are the areas that we should be uh, paying attention to um, and which resources uh, can you have to start this career with the right foot. So let's see um, as a starting point, what do you understand uh, an online freelancer is? So I'm gonna ask you on this to make the session a bit interactive so you know also from each other during the session. Uh, please go to this website www.menti.com. You're gonna be uh, requested to enter a code there. So you will put 86108902. And we will start making some questions over there. In the meantime, I see here um, Malen Lunga, uh, who is connecting from Belgium. She was telling us she would like to know different ways to find clients online. That's good. Um, so um, thank you for giving us the feedback here. Okay. So you should be at the moment um, in this website, menti.com. Um, so basically you can write what is for you online an online freelancer. So we are starting to hear we're gonna build a, a cloud of words uh, from all the feedback that we get from you. So you're talking about flexibility, about uh, independency, okay. Creative work, yeah, that's a very interesting one. Um, we see also multi-skilled worker, okay. So seems like you consider that an online freelancer needs to know more than one particular area skillful entrepreneur that's an interesting one so it's someone that has definitely that has the skills and that it's considered to be an entrepreneur um you also uh saying remote work 
Okay, so it's, uh, I guess because it's online, right? That you will be uh, mainly focusing on online or remote work. Um, what else? You see how nicely this is building. Uh, remote work seems to be the most uh, frequent answer that we are getting. Um, flexibility is always there, or being having the possibility to be uh, flexible in the way that you organize yourself. Very good. So it seems like we are getting around remote work already. Uh, you're mentioning here financially independent. Okay, we will see if this is some uh, kind of a requirement or if this is something that um, it's um, you're looking for when you work as an online freelancer. Very well. So thank you for answering that. I'm gonna I'm gonna move now to um, a definition of what it is because um, it's it's such a term, you know, a freelancer, when you talk to people, not everybody is familiar with the same term or understanding it in the same way. So basically we went to Wikipedia. Yeah, that's an easy way to <laughs> define things nowadays. Uh, and what you can find there is that an online freelancer is defined as a person who is self-employed, so is the independence that we were talking about before, uh, not necessarily committed to a particular employer long-term. So, okay, you are not tied to one single client or one employer at all. Um, and who uses websites to get work? Okay, so this means you are using a website to get those jobs, but you can let's say, arrange your time around it. Uh, so what will be char characteristics of these um, online freelancers are, okay, you invest your time uh, depending on your needs and the needs of your clients. So you don't have like a fixed schedule in an office, you manage your own time. Uh, and you offer services through contracts that are specifying the timelines of execution and the conditions. So this is, um, let's say, very different to what uh, traditional employment uh, is, even if that it's a remote work. No? So with the COVID, it's been really common um, that people is working remotely. But if you are an employee and you have a fixed salary, you're getting every month your payment, you're doing your work, but you do one day more than the other, but you have, let's say, this stability um, of uh, income. Mm, this is very different from the life of an online freelancer, right? So let's see in the next slide, what is this online freelancing world? So you will see in, in this study, and we always share the, the sources of information so you can go later and check um, further details on, on what we're sharing. It was said that by 2025, the freelancers could add 2.7 trillion to the global GDP and begin to ameliorate many of the persistent problems in the world's labor markets. So this is about the uh, freelancing platforms and how they are growing to uh, be a big chunk of the global economy. And where do you find this? These platforms um, are have been, let's say, growing in the last 10 to 15 years, there are some very generalistic, some others are very um, focused on one specific area of um, expertise. So for example, you have um, 99 Designs is all about designers. You have um, TopTel that has like three different or four nowadays areas of expertise like uh, web development or financers or um, I think it was some um, administrative support. Um, you have, for example, Catalan and Alex and Ch Exchange at the right side, which are very focused on consulting services. So people that had been in the consulting uh, companies, big fours before, um, or that um, have started an MBA and have certain level of skills to support global projects. So there is a bit of um, a mix between generalistic platforms and uh, very specialized platforms. And you see like these three dots at both sides. 
Why? Because this is evolving. So as we are talking, there are new platforms coming out. There are some shutting down. Uh, some are regional, like for example, WorkCana in Latin America, uh, and some in general are um, global. So this is an evolving and very, very active market, which is very interesting to observe. Now, the way we work has changed, something that we have already perceived, uh, and COVID just uh, accelerated everything. And now it's not weird to say you work remotely or to have um, meetings from home. So the borders started to get blurred uh, and there are many more opportunities and the demand in freelance platforms is growing. So where are the big opportunities coming from? And this is interesting because um, it's not for everybody. So the first thing to say is you need to be able to uh, provide your services online. If you are, for example, a dentist and you work with patients um, face to face, that's definitely not your market. Um, for um, being able to work online, you need to be able to perform your work 100% remote. Um, and that's why digital skills are so needed. And some of you were already mentioning that. Um, so the areas where we see the biggest opportunity are web and mobile development, graphic design, and in general, these creative skills. Some of you mentioned freelancers go to creative work. That's very, very true. And it's one of the areas that traditionally has been freelancing. Uh, digital marketing has been growing a lot, writing and translation, also administrative support, virtual assistance is, is growing and customer service in general. Okay, so if you look at the global demand, you're gonna see that the most demanded profiles are uh, the software development and technology roles. This is clear because we know already um, the digitalization of the companies is increasing the demand for this type of profiles. Uh, but you also see how between 2018 and 2020, the demand is more or less stable for uh, or, or even um, growing in the, in the case of um, sales and marketing. Okay, there has been some decrease, but it's still very important demand in creative and multimedia profiles, in writing, in data entry and clerical jobs, and also in professional services. And what we are observing is that more and more Freelancing is uh, converting into a full-time dedication. Doesn't mean full-time jobs, okay? It's not employment, but it's you can fool your um, 40 or 50 hours per week, the, the one that, that you want to, to offer as a service with multiple um, contracts with different clients. It's getting much more specialized. So someone was saying, uh, multi-skilled workers, highly skilled workers. Yes, you need to have a very specific skills. So you don't need to know about everything, but be very good at what you know. Um, the income is starting to show a potential increase versus what you will make as an employee. And this is the reason why a lot of people is deciding to go freelancing because they can charge for their expertise um, and define the times that they want to work and earn more than what they make as um, an employee. And also is the preferred um, working mode for the younger generations and um, even people with more than 20, 30 years of experience are starting to use it as a transition to retire retirement. So it's decreasing um, maybe the, um, the dedication, but for very special um, projects that keep them you know, um, occupied, but without dedicating the full-time um, jobs that they are doing or doing it in parallel with, with the work they will stop doing. What about the clients and competitors? Because this is, okay, this is the most demanded, but where are the clients located? So if you see the demand is mostly coming from the United States. The American companies have been leading uh, the demand of work in the uh, um, freelance platforms. 
followed by the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and India at very similar levels in 2020. And then we start to see other countries in Europe and Asia. But as you can see, the American market is really leading the demand. And this is aligned, as we were saying before, with the increase in the demand for technical development. You see here, this green bar is the one that is really um, creating a very high demand together with the jobs for creative and multimedia, okay? In the right hand side, you see the supply. So who are the workers that are taking those jobs? And this is very interesting for you to know and why I was also, was also asking um, where you're coming from, because here you can see that India has been increasing, uh, leading and increasing the amount of workers who are taking those jobs that the United States are publishing. So it's a very big chunk of the, of the workers, but it's very, um, you can see, no, it's more skewed than the concentration that you see in the jobs. So this means it's really uh, a global possibility to operate in that market. You can see, okay, people from Bangladesh, from Pakistan, the big portions of India, for example, is in technical development, um, also aligned with the demand here. But then you see, for example, in Bangladesh, some uh, growing uh, areas in creative and multimedia, then again, you see the United States is participating with American workers that are taking those jobs, but is not a big portion of it. The Philippines is very, very active also. We start to see more workers from the United Kingdom coming into the platforms and from Ukraine and the Eastern European countries. You can find much more details here in this um, um, Internet Labor Index, but it's already an indication of how global this is going. Now, how do you know if online freelancing is the right choice for you? So there are four questions that you should be thinking about um, when you are either starting to consider going freelance or already um, interested in the freelancing platforms but not starting yet. So the first is, do you have experience using a set of skills in high demand in the online jobs market? I just show you the areas of expertise, so very broad, but then you go down to the skill level. So if we are talking, for example, about um, design, okay, we're talking about um, the Adobe Creative Suite, uh, about a specific uh, the, um, design for 2D animation, for example, or so you need to go down to the requested skills and see if those are the ones that you have to offer. Um, then can you deliver your work 100% remotely without this limitation of the physical location? So as I said before, if you need a face-to-face -face interaction with the customer to sell your services, online freelancing is not necessarily the best choice for you. Now, it's very important that you are well equipped because we are talking about remote work. You have, you need to have a good computer, access to a good computer, and a reliable internet connection. So this is more on the logistics side, at the right hand side. Uh, how well equipped are you? And then you need, of course, to get paid and be able to get that money for your day-to-day -day activities. So even if the customers pay in a platform, you will need to extract that money and be able to use it. So do you have a bank account or do you use some online payments provider that um, can help you to receive the transfers from abroad? And this is not, uh, let's say, it sounds like a simple question, but if you don't have this, you can work a lot, but you're not going to be able to get the money out of it. So it, it's not a, an ideal situation. So these are four things that you really need to consider. Let's see in which areas you will need to focus to start freelancing online. So there are some initial considerations to be taken as, for example, these four simple questions we were asking, but also 
uh, for example, do you know if in the regulation of your country it is mandatory to register to be able to sell your services as a self-employed? Uh, uh, if you have to register, how is the process? What are the conditions? Which obligations are you going to get? This is important before you uh, start to make your, your um, connections with clients. So understand your regulations then understand your situation. So if we will project the work that you are gonna um, offer, how much do you need to charge for your services? What are the costs that you are gonna have? And um, what will be then your financial situation? How many hours are you gonna need to work to get to the benefits that you wanna get out of the uh, costs that it will imply for you? Um, to offer those services. So there are some initial considerations just to have a clear picture of what it means to start this activity uh, and then to have all what you need to do the rest, okay? So let's say initially we have seen already that um, it's okay that you have all the conditions understood. Uh, then you will need to select a platform because we said online freelancing means that you're getting your work from a platform. And it doesn't mean only um, an online freelancing platform because uh, there is people working, for example, um, or finding clients in social networks, in uh, LinkedIn. So connected online, you can have much more access to potential clients than if you go um, to look for um, jobs or clients in, in the presential market. But um, let's say we see that in the platforms, in the online freelancing platforms, you have a lot of uncertainties covered, like for example, protection for payment. Um, you have a good tool to communicate to the clients. There is already a demand coming. I show you the numbers um, that you need to develop, let's say that, um, that, that, that market for yourself. The market is already there. You need to learn how to capture the opportunities as some of you were mentioning before. So going out there and selecting the platform that is best for you will be the next uh, step. And then when you go to those platforms, you need to create your profile there. So it's not only about being in the right place, but also being present in the right way. And then you will need to look for jobs. Okay. so. You create a profile because you don't only uh, need it to be a, a reference for yourself, but also because customers could be looking for people without posting jobs. So it's good that your profile is well written to, to be found. Okay. So once you look for jobs, let's say you start analyzing jobs every day uh, and then you find the ones that mm, you could do because they fit well with your profile, with your expectations. Um, of income uh, because the client seems serious like the type of client you would like to work with. Um, so if all of these um, aspects are covered, then you will have to prepare um, proposals and submit them to the client. So this is like an, a cover letter, an introduction for the client to know that you are interested on in the project and consider you as a candidate. Okay, so if this process is well done, you will have then the possibility to talk with a customer in an interview. And if everything goes well and the alignment between what the customer is looking for and what you can offer is good, then you will end up negotiating the contract and getting this job to start then uh, working on it. Of course, this is, we say always, this is not the, the end of the, of the journey. This is just the starting point to work. Okay, so all what you have done before has been preparatory jobs, uh, has been uh, touching the waters, um, just learning what's out there, but the job is coming now. So now is when you need to work in, with your hard skills. You have been working a lot to get those jobs and now you work with your um, hard skills 
to uh, provide this service or this product, this project that the customer hired you to do. Once you have executed the project, and you should need to make sure that this is a successful execution, you should get paid for that job. And of course, the satisfaction of the client with your work is very important to get paid. Not only to get paid the money that you agree with the customer to charge for the service that you just did, but also to have this, um, let's say, um, th there is a by payment, not only of money, but also the feedback and recommendations. So this is very important because you don't want one shots. You see all what you have to do to get to one single contract. If this customer is not satisfied, chances are you're not gonna be rehired by them. And then the cycle to do this every time with every opportunity is gonna take a lot of energy and efforts from you. Uh, plus when you get a positive uh, feedback from a client of yours, this gets um, saved in the platforms and that will be the, um, let's say, uh, evaluation from new customers to come. So if you have a positive feedback from a client, um, this is going to compute to your general rating in the platform. And guess what? When you um, apply to uh, a new job, when you submit proposals to a new job, uh, the order that the proposals get uh, shown at the eyes of the client will be influenced by your level of experience, by the feedback that you are receiving, by how well your profile matches the description of the job. So you need to make sure that you rank up in the first positions for the clients to see your proposals and consider you. So executing the project successfully and getting paid and closing the projects in a, with a good outcome uh, is as important as doing those first um, contacts with the clients. Okay, so we know it's really uh, or can be really overwhelming for someone that is just starting uh, to get all of this done at the right um, level of detail with the right quality and expectation, uh, particularly if you don't know how these platforms work. And that's the reason why we have really devoted to uh, providing free resources for freelancers to start their journey in this space. So um, I want to invite you because the details of every single step will not be covered within a webinar of one hour. But I want, I want to invite you to go to the ysr.pro blog, that's the, the website, uh, and there you're going to find the center of resources that we have been building to support freelancers on different levels of experience. So you will see um, some very detailed um, posts about how to create a good profile, how to find the jobs in the most effective um, and efficient way, how to find uh, then uh, to, sorry, how to write the proposals to make sure that you capture the attention of the client, how to have successful interviews, how to negotiate with the clients, uh, tools to execute your project successfully, uh, how to price your services, etc. Okay, so I really want to invite you to go there and explore at your level of experience what could be um, the next step that you would have to cover uh, to have all of this um, very clear and done. You will see there are some um, blog posts that are very for the basic entry level freelancer and some others that go into the specialization of someone that has been there some time, but maybe has a profile that is not really attracting clients. So how to review the profile. Um, maybe you are approaching a lot of clients without having a good um, feedback rate from them. You're not getting invited to interviews and you don't know why. So there are some uh, very methodic ways to check what could be improved 
uh, for you to get a better response and conversion from your activities there. Okay, so here I invite you to go and check in detail uh, what you may need. Uh, then there is a second invitation and it's for you to have the possibility to um, get a butler that searches jobs for you. So a set, and uh, let me go back to the previous slide here. Um, when you select a platform, for example, how, how can you select the best platform for you? Um, in general, when you go to the platforms, you don't see the, the jobs that are published. So how do you know if those jobs are gonna be enough in volume, interesting in payments? How do you know if the client's worth your time to create a profile in those platforms? Um, so we have created um, an aggregator that is wiser.pro uh, that what we do is you create a profile uh, in our website um, and we will ask you what's your area of expertise, what skills do you have, um, what's the ideal job that you're looking for in these platforms, etc. And with this information, we use artificial intelligence to compare the offer from five platforms, um, two of the global big ones, very generalistic, so it's really for um, a broad range of profiles. We compare your profile with the offer that they have currently at the moment. Uh, and then you will see immediately in which platform it's worth it to create a profile. That will be, let's say, the first service. Then the second service that you can get out of Wiser.pro is that um, every two hours, if I'm not wrong, every two hours, we update the demand of jobs in multiple platforms. So you don't need to spend a lot of time um, looking for jobs manually, but you can come to our website and you will see in the last two hours what has been published that aligns with your profile because you only see what is really uh, applicable to your profile. So you will be able to apply for those jobs faster. We analyze about 5,000 jobs per day so imagine if you have to do this by yourself, it will take so much time to spend only in this point four that you will not have enough time to submit proposals and then be from the first ones to present a proposal to get to the interviews with the clients. Okay, so that is why Startup Pro is a job butler service um, that is just searching for you. So you can focus on the activities that are more value added like preparing very good proposals and preparing for the interviews with the clients okay and the last portion that we uh, launched is wiser academy so what we did is okay we're sharing a lot of information in the in the blog but still you will need um extra level of uh, detail to really uh, make sure that you can uh, build all these uh, steps in the right way. So these are uh, training programs. We say they are life-changing because we have tested already uh, with some uh, talents in uh, Central America. We did last year a first pilot with 100 um, um, candidates um, that were, uh, let's say, financed by the Inter-American Development Bank. Uh, and we tested how their profile will evolve uh, and how they will be able to get jobs from not knowing the platform, still getting the first contracts within one month. So um, it's uh, already a, a tested um, exercise. Uh, and we have, uh, let's say, um, split it in three areas. So we see from uh, step one to step four, it's basically introduction to the um, online freelancing space, how to select the platforms, how to create the profiles and look for jobs. So that's the program that we call Starter. Um, then we have um, the, the submission of proposals and how to create really um, contract winning proposals, plus preparing for interviews and getting into negotiation with the clients. This is what we get in the Go-Getter program. And then the last part, um, is how to execute effectively 
uh, your projects, how to close the projects in the right, right way to get full payment and five star ratings, uh, and also how to be in compliance with um, the regulations of the country where, where you are um, or you have your tax residency. So these are three areas of expertise that um, you can, let's say, take independently or, or in a single package. Uh, and we have decided to offer them in two different ways. So um, you can go to YSRPRO slash academy. And in the website, you will find that there are two different modes that you can get supported by us. One uh, is the flying solo mode where you will have um, all the content uh, and you can have an idea of the content that we build from the blog posts but we will go in much deeper detail within the platform. Um, and you can just go on your own, check all the information, and then do uh, activities uh, at the same time to prepare yourself in each of these steps. That's one mode. The second mode is you can uh, have um, someone that is going with you and checking all of the activities that you do in the platform to make sure that you are really complying uh, with what is needed to thrive in this online freelancing space. Um, that's the hand in hand mode where you have a tutor that will be reviewing all of your activities and giving you feedback to make sure that you are ready to compete in these markets. So those are three courses, two modes. Um, you can go and explore in YSR Academy um, all of the details of the courses. Um, and of course, you're welcome to um, ask us anything particular if we can support you during this period of um, starting and building your online career. We're always happy to do that. So uh, with that, I really want to thank you. We are very uh, passionate by boosting careers for borderless digital freelancers. Um, and uh, I just explained that the three ways how we are doing that and really happy to, to support you. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and um, of course you are invited to join the, the YSR Academy programs. Um, I forgot to mention, we have two levels of, um, sorry, I, I told you we have two modes, uh, the flying solo and the hand in hand programs. Uh, but why I didn't mention how you can um, join those programs. So the flying solo programs are always open. So you can start anytime and you will have four weeks uh, to cover the full content of the program since you start. Um, in the case of the um, hand in hand program, you go in a group. Uh, it's like a cohort that starts uh, at the same time. So we have one program starting every month, except the month of August that is here, the, the summer pause in, in Europe. Um, but you will have to go, let's say, through a selection process. We are really uh, very committed to um, have you getting the most out of the program. So these, these programs are um, focused on freelancers that have most of the chances to be able to succeed in the online freelancing space. So we check your profiles just to make sure that you will be really um, the right um, candidates to, to see the return of your investment. Um, so that's it from my side. If you have any more questions, please raise your hand uh, right in the chat. I'm really looking forward to reply all of the doubts that you may have if we didn't talk about that uh, yet um, within the expectations that you have at the beginning. So we have still a couple of minutes. Feel free to, to ask anything. Um, I'm going to go back to the beginning. You were asking about how to maximize your chances to obtain freelance opportunities. Um, so, and, and this was from uh, Takajoshi. So I would say your biggest chances come when you match what the customers are looking for. And that's why it's so important to make sure that the skills that you have to offer are in demand um, and to make sure that your profile and your proposals 
are showing your expertise on those areas. So um, in the online freelancing platforms, in general, the customers are looking for someone that knows how to do the job. Uh, so for example, something that we ask freelancers to avoid is uh, applying to jobs that they would like to do to get some experience because the customers are really paying for someone that knows how to do it, that has experience and can get to the um, results as fast as possible. Okay, so how to maximize it? Make sure that you are in the right platform where there is demand for your services and paid at the right level. Then make sure that your profile is showing your expertise. You will have in the freelance platforms um, many possibilities to highlight your expertise. So you can use, for example, portfolios. So show examples of what you have already done. Uh, and if you can build it as a um, um, business case, you no, know, like this customer wanted this um, result and this is the starting point. This is how I approach it. This is the result that we got, always respecting the confidentiality of the clients, of course. But it's very important that you show that you already have done uh, something, even if you're new to the platform, but um, examples of your work. And then um, very important to have recommendations. So if you are new to a platform, that doesn't help, but everybody starts from scratch, right? Uh, at some point. So there are some platforms like Upwork, for example, that they let you invite um, LinkedIn contacts to provide um, feedback from your work with them, even if it didn't happen in the platform. So you can invite previous coworkers, um, even a boss that you had a very good uh, outcome with. Um, so this is very important to start. And then your proposals need to be really crisp, uh, going directly on the areas that the customer was interested to see um, your expertise. So just make sure that you uh, show that you understand the need of the customer in your proposal. No? So first, I understand what you're talking about. This is what I've done, which is my best presentation card that you know that I'm capable of doing it. And then have a very clear call to action to have a meeting with the customer. If you have some questions that you still um, need to, to get from the client to make sure that you have a good fit, asking questions is always a, a way to show that you um, know what you're talking about. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and then just have a very close follow up. This is a, a methodology. You need to be on top of your uh, messaging to make sure that you reply to the customer as soon as there is some feedback from them. Um, of course, you need to have a competitive price. So setting the right price point is very important. Um, and also knowing what's your range of negotiation uh, to have a good um, interview uh, and get to a contract that is beneficial for you and for the customer. So I would say those are the critical areas to make sure that you can really grab the opportunities online. And once you get there, be obsessed with the communication without bothering the other side, but make sure that you uh, keep the customer on top of what you're doing, uh, of how um, the project is progressing. Mm -hmm. If you need anything from them to make sure that this um, is completed on time and in the right quality, uh, just keep them on the loop, don't let them Think that you're not working or be nervous so you need to build trust uh, on their side um, and with this you should be able to finish the project as expected and get a positive feedback from them which is really the cycle to be rehired or to get a good recommendation then for other customers you know that get referrals from your work and be able to uh, get new jobs and new clients um, this will be something that you will be doing in a cycle for a couple of times, but then you will start to see that you build the relationship with the clients and you can have multiple clients um, working in, the, uh, in parallel. So you will have to decide how to, um, let's say, split your time between them. And hopefully this will create also possibilities for you to collaborate with other freelancers that have 
similar skills or complementary skills um, that you could then um, offer faster or broader services to the same market. Okay, so that will be, I would say, the, those will be the areas of um, differentiation where you need to uh, make sure that you excel to, to be able to be successful and um, build a sustainable career in these online freelancing platforms. Uh, you are asking us if we could send the list of freelancing websites. Um, we could send you, let me do that for you. Um, you're going to have access to this uh, presentation, so you have all the names of the, of the platforms there. But very recently, uh, we saw uh, a post from um, Pioneer that it's a service to get paid online that is connected with uh, some of the biggest platforms. And they were showing a very interesting chart of which platforms are positioned in which um, areas. So that's going to be um, something that could be very useful for you. We will share it with all the attendants so you have the information. Um, yes, Punet, we're going to share the, the recording, as you are asking here. Um, OK, bring this kind of webinars. I'm not sure about the, the I'm, I'm reading some of the uh, comments that I'm getting in the chat in, in direct messages um, about these webinars coming in the upcoming days. I'm not sure what, what you meant with that, Punet, if you are connected and want to share about that uh, a bit more. Um, as said, we will share this, um, this uh, recording with you. And um, you're really invited to check the, the websites that I was sharing. There is so much information there uh, for you to start with. And if you find at some point that um, you will need more support or any further details, don't, don't hesitate to contact us. There is um, a chat um, that we can have um, a conversation with you directly in our website and support you if also you find some um, areas that will be interesting to explore. No? For example, um, someone was asking us the other day uh, if we could share more information about the definition of global rates. Um, so we will be preparing uh, a blog article about that. Uh, so we are always uh, welcome welcoming uh, ideas for content that you may need. So with this, I want to thank you again for your participation. Um, you will have the recording of the webinar. Um, you will see the presentation there. Uh, you have um, there my contact details uh, and the, the addresses of the websites where we offer the different services that I mentioned. So feel free to contact me or my team um, if we can support you at some point. Thank you all, and I wish you a good afternoon. Thanks, everybody.